Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Drotus, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. Today I'm going to continue to talk about the last of the last days. In fact, the very last day of the seven year tribulation period, which is before us. We're not there yet. But on the very last day, we we come to the point where we refer to it as, or the Bible refers to it as, the day of the Lord. This is the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is the time when he comes back to set up his millennial kingdom. It's one day, it's the last day, and then the next day will be the beginning of the millennial kingdom. It's a terrible day. And Zechariah talks about it in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. This is this uh, lesson is part two. I've referred to it as the day of the Lord, the return of Jesus to set us his kingdom in Armageddon. This will be part two of this lesson that I'm talking about of the last of the last days. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1 he describes this, and he says, Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. There is a day, as we said, the last day of the tribulation period, not the rapture. The rapture occurs a few years prior to that. The rapture occurs prior to this day. It's not the same day as some people like to teach and believe. Who's going to be uh, uh, at this day? Who will be left? The beast, the false prophet, those who have the mark of the beast, who haven't died already, the unbeliever, the demon possessed, and the Jews, those who have not accepted Jesus as their Messiah, will be here on the earth at the last of the last days during the final seven years of the earth. Not the church. Not the born-again believers. Not those who receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They will have been evacuated. They have been, will be caught up. They have been taken away through the rapture a few years prior to this day of the Lord. Where is this day going to be, occur? Or where is the venue? It's actually worldwide, but what's the venue? Zechariah 14, 2. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravaged. Half the city shall go into captivity, Captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Zechariah describes that at the very end of the age, that Satan will once again amass an army of nations to, to destroy or to level Jerusalem, to destroy the Jewish nation, and to actually fight against Jesus to deter him from coming back. Where will this be? I already said Jerusalem, but also on the outskirts of Jerusalem. Look at Revelation chapter 16. Revelation 16 tells us about this great battle. Revelation 16, starting in verse 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might pre be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs which go out to, to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, these are the words of Jesus, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Verse 16, And they gather them together in the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. This is also the valley of Megiddo which is outside of the city of Jerusalem. Satan will amass a mighty army from all the nations of the world, all the demon-possessed, unsaved people that want to destroy Israel and, and thwart the, the second return of Jesus Christ to the earth. Revelation 14. Look at Revelation 14, verse 17. Then another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar who had power over fire. And he cried with a loud voice 
to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. So the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. We're talking about the last day, the day of the Lord, the battle of Armageddon. And the winepress was trampled outside the city on the valley plains of Megiddo. And the blood came out of the winepress up to the horse's bridle for 1,600 furlongs. This is a bloody battle where the Lord is going to fight against the Antichrist, the, the Satan, the false prophet, the demon possessed, those who have the mark of the beast. And he will obliterate them at this great valley. John saw the battle. John saw the battle in Revelation 19. Either he was moved forward in time or he saw it played out before him. But John saw it in Revelation 19. 19 and he describes the battle revelation 19 verse 17 then i saw an angel standing in the sun that's interesting standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven come and gather together for the supper of the great god that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of all of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, with him the false prophet who worked signs, in the presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped the image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all their birds were filled with their flesh. John describes the battle. It's not much of a battle. Jesus comes back and he obliterates all of them. He obliterates the beast, the false prophet, and the armies that have amassed against him. I don't really think that we will be in the fighting. I know we will come back with the Lord in Revelation chapter 17, Revelation chapter 19. It says in verse 14 that we come back with the Lord, but I don't think we'll do much of the fighting. I think that fighting will be reserved for the Lord and for the angelic host. Now, let's look at what Joel has to say about this. Joel describes the battle as well. Go back in the Old Testament to Joel chapter 2. And he describes the, the battle. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses and like swift steeds. So they run with a noise like chariots over mountains. They leap like the noise of flaming fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. Before them, the people writhe in pain. All faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation. They do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are, not, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb in the houses. They enter into the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon grow dark. The stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for strong is the one who exercises his word. For the day of the Lord is great. And very terrible. Who can endure? Joel describes this battle. And I think he's describing the angelic hosts that come back to fight at this great battle. Isaiah mentions it as well. Isaiah chapter 13. Verse 6 through 11. Well, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands will be limp. Every man's heart will melt, and they will be afraid. Pains and sorrows will take hold of them. 
They will be in pain as a woman in ch childbirth. They will be amazed at, at one another. Their faces will be like flames. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with both wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. He will destroy his its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. I will punish the world for its evil and for the wicked, for the, the, the iniquity. I will halt the arrogance of the proud and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a mortal more rare than fine gold, a man more than golden wedge of Ophar. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth will move out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts. And we could go on and read it, but this is Joel's account and Isaiah's account, John's account of the battle of Armageddon. God comes back and he will fight this massive army. His angels will re return with him as well. And they will fight this massive army and obliterate them. The Bible says in Revelation that the blood will be up to the horse's bridle. It will be a bloody day. It will be a time of retribution. It will be a time of cleansing on the earth. Now, let's close this lesson back in Zechariah. So go back to the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, as, as Zechariah says one final thing about this great battle. And this shall be the plague. Remember when the Lord returns and obliterates the army? Zechariah describes a little bit in detail how this is going to happen. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouth. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize his hand and his neighbor and raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Zechariah describes this, this plague that's going to come against the people. Verse 14, Judah will fight at, at Jerusalem and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Such also shall be the plague on the horse, on the mule, on the camel, on the donkey, and on all the cattle that will be in those camps. So shall this plague be. Zechariah calls it a plague. It actually sounds like a nuclear bomb. The plague or the weapon that Jesus uses when he comes back. Now, I don't think it will necessarily be a nuclear bomb or an atomic bomb. I don't think Jesus needs to use an atomic bomb. But the results are going to be very similar to an atomic bomb. The, the, their flesh will fall off of their body. Their eyes will melt in their sockets. Their, their tongue will d dissolve in their mouths. Now in Revelation 19, we read exactly what happens at this great day. Revelation 19, verse 15. Now, out of his mouth, here's the weapon. Here's the weapon that creates the plague that we just talked about. Now, out of his mouth, Revelation 19, 15. Now, out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. When Jesus comes back, he speaks the word and they are obliterated. Probably some, some atomic level where they are just actually dissolved or melt before the Lord. With the same force, the same result as an atomic bomb. I'm going to stop there today. I think we've gone far enough talking about this, this great day of the Lord, the battle of Armageddon, the end of the age. I'm going to stop today. But I'm going to continue on with part three next time as we find out what happens after the final battle, the battle of Armageddon. 
So thank you for watching. Hey, I wanted to give a shout out to some of the people who have said that they're praying for me. I've been meaning to do this on a video, and now I get the opportunity to do it. So I'm giving a shout out to Christine, to Joe, sorry, Christine, Joe, still thinking about Joel, Christine, Joe, Nicole, and DLC Ministries. Thank you. That is four prayer partners, four people that said they are praying for me. I appreciate that. I've got you on my list. I'm praying for you as well. And if anyone else wants to be added to the list, let me know. I'll put you down on the list. I'm praying that we reach the world with the message that Jesus Christ is coming back. So if you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. Please do. Please uh, like. Please subscribe. Please share. Um, if you've already subscribed, don't hit subscribe because then you unsubscribe yourself. If you haven't, if you if you have a prayer request, please reach out to me. I'll pray with you and for you and get get back to you in a timely fashion. If you're interested in reading my novel, Waiting for the Rapture, that's the first of three novel end time novel novels. You can get that at the website www.waitingfortherapture.com, or you can look on Amazon and get it as well. So in the meantime, keep watching, keep sharing, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. The rapture is real, and I'm waiting for the rapture. God bless you. We'll see you next time.